Coming up on this edition of ATV News. A 10 cents a gallon difference is hardly anything. We'll tell you why it might be better to wait to fill up your tank if you're heading south. It is freezing out here and some teens only have their vehicles to live in. Coming up, I'll show you how One Utah Project is getting students out of their cars and into their schools. The herd is a tough crowd. We'll show you who brought out their sensitive site. In weather, I'll predict next week's snowfall using an experimental set of data from the National Weather Service. In sports, I'll show you how much free throws mattered in our latest basketball games. All that and more, this is ATV News. You wouldn't think you wouldn't see a train, but the reality is sometimes you don't see that gorilla in the room. The Cache County Sheriff's Office reminds people to always pay attention while driving after a man was struck by a train. Welcome to the first edition of ATV News of the semester. I'm Anna Johnson. And I'm Katie Varga. A driver is recovering after a train crashed into his truck. The Cache County Sheriff's Office says Gary Riddle of Cache County was driving east on 800 South in Trenton. The train was traveling south when it struck Riddle's truck, pushing it off the road and into a ditch on the other side of the tracks. The Sheriff's Office says it took this train about half a mile to stop at full emergency braking. First responders pulled Riddle from his truck. The Sheriff's Office says they will not be giving any additional patient updates. He had undergone multiple, multiple surgeries to address the uh, plethora of injuries that he had, and I have not received an update since then. The sheriff's office says the investigation is ongoing and won't speculate on the cause of the crash at this time. They also remind, remind drivers to see tracks, think train, and yield at intersections. What if you didn't know where your next meal was coming from? That is the reality for thousands of Utah teens. I met with one group trying to help these teens find support. And it was three and a half years before I received the support and help I needed. Cecilia Gonzalez struggled with housing and food insecurity through most of her high school years, even after reaching out to teachers and school administrators for help. It was easier to turn a blind eye. Not that these people that I trusted didn't care. Who do you call? Now she's working with the nonprofit The Policy Project to ensure Utah teens will have access to laundry, showers, and a trusted adult right in their high school. The National Center for Homeless Education says there are over 10,000 homeless students in Utah couch surfing, camping out, or living in cars. The project would take unused computer labs like this one and turn them into teen centers where students can focus on their classes not their next meal. If you're hungry and you go to class, you're not learning, right? You're, you're not focusing on class, you're not able to fully be present. Volunteers at the Northern Utah kickoff event wrote postcards to their legislators, urging them to approve Governor Cox's 2024 budget, which would allocate $20 million to the project. Volunteers shared personal stories in their messages. One of these sits here and says, what a difference it would have made for me to have had a teen center in my school growing up. That would have made a huge difference in my life, so please let's do this for the next generation. Gonzalez says having the support of a teen center would have changed her life. It goes back to being able to talk, being able to have that adult, and if I walk out with a cup of soup, then that's a bonus. The will vote on whether to approve funding for the project by the end of the legislative session on March 4th. You might have seen a new building under construction down Old Main Hill. The building will be an N-Circle House, a youth and family resource center for the LGBTQ plus community in Logan once completed. These guys are here to put in a gas line at the construction site where a new LGBTQ plus support center is being built. Omar Seas chairs Logan Pride, a different LGBTQ plus community and resource center, says they don't see Encircle as their competition, but as a source of more support for their community and adds, The more support, the merrier. This is not a competition. It, it's a partnership. 
As for the students at USU, the project demonstrates acceptance of minority groups in the cash community. The visibility of things like an in-circle house being built, I think, will really sort of demonstrate that this is an area that is growing and is expanding, and that sort of circle of acceptance for people within not just the USU community, but the Cache Valley community. The house was supposed to be done by spring semester, but as you can see, it still has a ways to go and a representative from Encircle says they are stopping construction. This is the email from Encircle saying they had postponed construction and that they don't have a specific opening date at the moment. We still don't know the reason why the construction is being put on hold as Encircle has not gotten back to us on that question. ATV News, Zahir Nasir. If you are interested in learning more about Encircles, visit our Facebook page where you will find a link to their organization. The Utah Senate passed three bills about transgender youth and health care. Senate Bill 93 bans changes to birth certificates for anyone under 18. Senate Bill 100 requires schools to receive parental consent to consider students as a gender other than the one they were assigned at birth. Senate Bill 16 bans sex reassignment surgeries and puberty blockers for minors. This bill has seen the most pushback. Senator Karen Kwan says the American Medical Association strongly opposes this bill, and so does she. As a uh, professor, uh, it weighs heavy because of the increase in uh, uh, mental health issues. After passing in the Senate, House Speaker Brad Wilson says he expects the bills to pass the House as well, with minor changes. The Menden Library is trying to educate people about the world. This weekend, they asked Cash Valley's help, but they didn't receive the, spot, the response that they were except, expecting. <laughs> The Menden Library held a multicultural night, an event for foreign exchange students to educate Cache Valley on other cultures that are around the globe. But the library says their goal is to develop children's and adults' views of the world. They say it helps us see others' views and make us more empathetic. I always say it's good for people to have more culture. <laughs> um, it enriches our lives to learn more about how other people live and how other people uh, exist. DeCourcy says she advertised the event on multiple platforms but was saddened by the turnout of five people. Even with the small group, the students presented their countries such as France, Turkey, Belgium and Spain. Students say they were happy to try to educate others about where they are from. DeCourcy says she wants to host another multicultural night but hopes more people attend. Filling up your car with gas can cost you more or less money depending on where you stop. Verl Johansson tells us why deciding where to buy gas can be a tough choice. Putting a gas pump into your car to fill up costs you different amounts around the state. But why is it less at some gas stations in Brigham City than ones in Logan? A lot of the, the gas stations that I would see in Brigham City are on major thoroughfares, they're on the freeway. The freeway, of course, is a more competitive environment than the typical captured market that you'd see in Cache Valley. Put in perspective with other things we buy, Fawson says the savings from buying gas for a few cents cheaper is hardly anything. You would think nothing about spending $5 for a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate at Starbucks, and yet we're hyper concerned about spending an extra 70 or 80 cents per tank at one gas station versus the other. Fawson says selecting a gas station is a complex process that involves many factors for people like convenience, price, and even the cleanliness of bathrooms. But what do people in Cache Valley say is the most important factor? I would say primarily probably the price, um, closely followed by convenience. I would say the conveniency of the gas station being close to me. I would definitely say it, the gas price. For people like Joe Mixon, current prices add stress to tight budgets. Money's tight for everybody. You know, rent's high, um, gas prices are high, you know, food's high. Burl Johansson, ATV News. People should admire how something as simple as gas prices can be complex. While you're at the gas pump, remember to fill up your tires. 
with air too, as the cold weather we're having can actually decrease the volume and therefore the pressure of air in your tires. You know, I think my tire light is on, so next time I fill up with gas, I will definitely do that. And coming up. I was pumped when I like, got like a, like a, a thousand likes. Her video has over 8 million views on TikTok. Coming up, see how you may be one post away from going viral. To have a year like this finally is great news. You may have noticed we have gotten a lot of snow this season, even though Utah isn't a drought. Find out how all the snow could change your summer plans. <laughs> You don't want this to happen to you. We'll show you how the Aggies fared against the Air Force last Friday. Coming up in weather, I'll tell you what you need to expect for the week. The current temperature is 23 degrees. Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh yeah, all right, all good. Take care, way to go. Nice, bring it on. Gotcha, I'm here for you. Oh no, please, please. Please, I'm waiting. Interesting. Not buying it. Not fair. That's it. This conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face grouping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T, time, time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment, and that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Welcome to ATB Weather, I'm Joe Cooney. The main system we're seeing on our national radar is this big clump of rain and snow over most of eastern Texas and Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma is expected to get up to three inches of snow from this storm, where more of that rain is heading towards Texas. Now, over the next few days, this storm is expected to move up the mid-Atlantic and into the northeast. Now, while the skies over Utah are pretty clear today, let's take a look at the National Weather Service's probabilistic snow forecast to see how much snow we might get in Utah over the next few days. As you can see, this graph on your left here shows uh, the percent chance that each area of Utah will get more than a tenth of an inch of snow. And those chances are pretty high over most of Utah, especially in the ski areas. Now, this means even though it's only 0.1 inches of snow, that Utah won't be seeing too much snow over most of the state this week. However, in those ski areas, this graph on the right shows the chance that those areas will receive more than one inch of snow. And really, the only way we can see that snow is in those uh, high areas. Now in our seven day forecast, we can see that uh, today we're supposed to get most of that rain and snow uh, over Utah. Now that tapers off the rest of this week, but starts to pick up again back on that weekend where we're seeing low-ish chances of snow and temperatures still near freezing. Now that you're all caught up with the weather, I'll go back to you at the desk. Thanks, Joe. Our recent storms are a complete 180 from this summer's weather. Let's take a look at how all this snow is helping us out. According to snowflow.org, Utah Snow Report says the current snowpack is about 160% of the expected average at this point of the year. Even though that's above average, it is not enough to help Utahns out of the drought. We're going to need at least two of these years, most likely three of these kind of years back to back to back before we are at sort of a, an average healthy state in our reservoirs. Meyer says the streams running into the reservoirs like these will see an extra 30% more water than usual, though it won't solve the long-term effects of the drought. There are still a few more storms on their way before spring comes, so the snowpack will hopefully continue to grow. We're going to need 8.1 million TikTok views and growing. That's how one Utah State student is making a living with dad jokes. Phil Weber joins us live from the Mac Labs to tell us more. How's it going, Phil? I'm doing great, Anna. Here is Nev Pratt's TikTok account where she has 199,000 followers, and just in the past 30 minutes, she has gained 200. I was able to sit down with her and decide how, see how one video can change your life. Oh, oh, oh. Before 2023 starts, I'm going to need to see some terms and conditions. <laughs> That's the video. <laughs> 
that got over 8 million views. Utah State freshman Nev Pratt started a TikTok page in December of 2022. She and her friends were just out to get some laughs until she posted a video right before finals. And it just kind of like took off a little bit. And then the next one right after that, about finals again, just like blew up. Nev says she never thought it'd go viral. No, not at all. I was I was pumped when I like got like a like a a thousand likes on a, one of my finals ones at the Huntsman Building. After Monday and Tuesday, even the calendar says WTF. I did not expect it to blow up, but yeah, here we are. Nev has 196,000 followers and is getting more. <laughs> TikTok has changed the way that we view social media, making it easier than ever to go viral. Anyone behind me here today can be famous or go viral tomorrow. <laughs> I think the incentive of getting going viral or like becoming famous is what keeps people on TikTok a lot of time. Most social media platforms use what's called a social graph, meaning you see content based on who you're friends with. TikTok says they use AI to curate content based on what they think you'll like. I think there's just so many more people on TikTok and it's so like you can see so much more content in a day than you can on other apps. So it's so easy for like you to blow up. So it's very fun to tell people now that my job is a comedic influencer yeah. for the people. You can check out more of Nez's content through a link through our Facebook page. Reporting live from the Mac Lab, Phil Weber. Back to you, Anna. Thanks, Phil. Sorry about that little technical difficulty. Are you two big TikTok users? I try not to because it sucks me in and I will be on there for hours, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm not a TikTok guy. Uh, it, you gotta dance to, be, to make a difference. But anyway, we'll get to that later. Coming up. The USU women's club soccer team is about to start their season. We'll show you why there's a club team in the first place. Go leaves it for Akin. Akin, oh ho ho! Men's basketball was a real nail biter against San Jose. I'll show you how the Aggies managed to pull it off. They gave me Vicodin after my knee surgery. They kept prescribing it, so I kept taking it. I didn't know it would be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Welcome to ATV Sports, I'm Marcus Lamb. We had a ton of basketball action last weekend, so let's get back to the women's basketball game, shall we? The Aggies faced off against Air Force last Thursday with the Blues earning the first three-pointer of the game. Look at that swish. Later, the Aggies finally scored a point of their own by a free throw, which sounds like a good thing, I know, but it might lead to the downfall in the long run. You'll see soon enough. The Aggies caught up with a layup in the first period. You'll see in a bit, Tamia Robinson fired a three-pointer, hitting the rim, getting the ball back, and passing it over to Olivia Wickstrom for the first Aggie three-pointer of the game, making the score 5-6. to six. Wickstrom tried to score another miracle by her lonesome, but she managed an assist by passing over to Maria Carvalho for the layup, earning a two-pointer. But Primacella was more a part of the action, just like she did in the cold open, so she decided to make a fast break for the hoop. She had the ball right there, leading it all the way from the half court. And by the time she got to the hoop, she, she made the score, bringing it up to 11 to 10. Air Force was catching up quick near the end of the first period, making the Aggies more aggressive than usual. Wickstrom passed the ball to Lauren, but as you can see, she's going for the layup. She got smacked right in the face in return, getting subbed out for her troubles. Shella's Prima kept the Aggies' free throw streak going by making two more in the second period. And, that, and, of course, that gave the Aggie team with a boost of energy, handing the ball over to Asia Klo Kloppenstein, making a three-pointer, building up the momentum, and making the score 21-23. to 23. By the third period, Air Force was caught up, making the score 38-38, to 38, and that's when Tamia Robinson said, Witness me! Making a three-pointer across the court. The Aggies made their 18th free throw of the game in the fourth period, and sadly, that was the last time they scored. Air Force took the Aggies by the horns, 66 to 59. 
The women's basketball team went up to San Jose to face with the Spartans. Unfortunately, they lost 59-77. The women's basketball team will face off against the Wyoming Cowgirls here in Logan next Thursday. Speaking of Spartans, the men's basketball team had their own Spartan army to deal with in what may be the tightest game of the season. Over 8,000 people came to the stadium to see the Aggies take on San Jose. Two minutes into the first period, Funkmaster Tyler Funk scored his team their first dunk, starting things off right. The Spartans, however, demanded a blood debt, and they made their statement with Amari Moore, making a sweet dunk right there, bringing the score 4-2. The blood debt was heard and denied by Tyler Funk, blocking Ibrahim Diallo's dunk, leaving it wedged into the rim. Almost unbelievable, really. Seven minutes into the game, Dan Aiken makes his way into the game, pulling a two-handed dunk, leading the Aggies by two, making the score 9-12. Shortly after, the Spartans retaliated with a brutal layup, making that lead only by one instead of three, and eventually bringing the score 20-15, with a whole lot of free throws and a little three-point shot to make things even. By the end of the first quarter, the Spartans were leading 37-30. Not wanting to be outdone in the second quarter, Stephen Ashworth, seen here enjoying his victory, aimed for a new personal three-point record, making the most attempts he's made in his career. But the three-pointers brought his team up nine points, setting the stage for a comeback. You can see right there, he makes another three-pointer, hyping up the crowd and getting the fans really excited. But the Spartans didn't relent. As Ashworth, after Ashworth made his three-pointer right there in the game, Omar, Omar made his point on the paint, and this was not going to be easy, making the score back down 42-39. to A war of attrition was held between the Spartans and the Aggies, with the score at 72-68. to It was rigid, but it all changed with Shulga assisting Taylor with another dunk, bringing the, score, bringing the score up and giving Ashworth another chance with one last three-point shot from Ashworth. The Aggies finally ahead up two points. The Spartans took that personally with Tolbert Stage going in for the layup, making the score tied 74-74. to And the game ended with one decisive free throw by Max Shulga, his most important one of the season. He finally made that, and the Spartans tried for a three-pointer, but as you can see, they missed by a hair. The Aggies danced to reach his edge, 74-75. The men's basketball team will be heading down to California to face off against San Diego State. The USU's men's tennis team played against the University of Oregon last Friday. We lost the match 6-1 and are frozen until February. Utah State's gymnastic team faltered against Southern Utah last Friday as well. They weren't so lucky either though, but they're looking to make up for it against BYU at the stadium this Friday. And finally, the men's and women's track and field team record four individual titles and 24 top five finishers in Lincoln, Nebraska. They'll be heading to Pocatello, Idaho, and Seattle, Washington next Friday. Now, the USU Spirit Squad held its annual mini dance clinic this year. I managed to make rehearsals to see how our future Aggie students did. One, two, three, go! Woo! Good. This poseworthy girl you see is Ellie. She's a dancing savant. Ellie, do you love to dance? I love dance. Ellie's mom said she's been dancing since the beginning. Her aunt and her grandmas are all in dance and love to dance. And she just kind of has loved dancing from the time she was born. And she could be an even greater dancer learning from the USC Spirit Squad. Spirit Squad is super talented and they've also had lots of experience teaching. So they choreograph the dance themselves. It's a party and they learn a lot. It's not just the dance moves. Ellie is learning the cheers and learning what it's like being an Aggie fan. Gets them on campus, it, it gives them a taste of what Utah State is all about. Ellie busted the move, learned the cheer, and maybe blew a few eardrums along the way. And now she's off to the stadium where she faces off against her greatest rival. Not the Spartans, but the Herd. The Herd may seem intimidating at first, but Coach Watts wasn't worried at all. They just love little Aggie fans. It's what this whole community is all about. Kids managed to pair it up. Did Ellie have a fun time? Marcus Lamb, ATV News. Lots of fun. Ellie and the kids performed for over 8,000 audience members at the Spectrum. The kids had a blast rehearsing, and hopefully we'll be seeing some new Aggieettes soon enough. The USU Women's Club soccer team is holding tryouts for their upcoming season. To get ready for tryouts, the club plays every Wednesday in a city league at the Hanson Family Sport Complex. The 
coach, Xander Hayden, says it's unique to be part of the club. The environment is different between this and a D1 team or this and intramurals. It's this nice little niche where we can have fun and take it seriously at the same time. Hayden is for people to get better at the at reasons they the club love exists as well. is to let people play competitively while also meeting a new people. The reason why this club exists. The regular season starts for the club on March 18th. It's for people to get better. And now you're all caught up on sports as soon as we get out of this video. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but we'll hand it over back to you, Anna. Thanks, Marcus. Global Village Gifts is the only fair trade and nonprofit store in Utah selling anything from unique pieces of jewelry to spice blends. Paige Johnson takes us inside for a better look at what they do and what kind of impact they have. These bells and colorful items welcome customers to this local gift shop. They're part of an international group called the Fair Trade Federation and only buy products with their stamp of approval. We get a lot of handcrafted items made out of carved things such as soapstone. Um, a lot of items are made from recycled material. The Fair Trade Federation also makes sure there are safe working conditions for the artisans and that none of the items are made with child labor. All these products are definitely more valuable in my eyes. Um, going through like the cookie cutter type gift shops is definitely get kind of boring, but here knowing that everything's handmade is just way cooler. Global Village Gifts receives items from around the world. Each item has its own tag labeling where it's from and what it's made of, such as this alpaca doll. This doll is made in Peru and is made of 100% alpaca fur. The items are made by women in order to help them escape dangerous situations that they might be in in different countries. So we have a lot of items that are helping them earn a fair wage to help support their family. According to Oxfam International, women on average earn 24% less money than men due to factors like discrimination and unequal opportunities. In poorer countries, those odds can be much worse. Everything is backed by either uh, a cause or women who've crafted them. If somebody told me that as I was walking by, I'd walk in and buy something. Paige Johnson, ATV News. For more information about their mission or how to get involved at their store, you can visit our Facebook page. That is all for this edition of ATV News. You can find this edition and others on our Facebook page. We'll leave you with the shots of our girls' soccer team. Have a great week, Cash Valley. Surplus store. Someone's trash is about to be my treasure. We have cords and cables here. We have bags full of towels and sheets. Do you want this fold up mattress? Because we don't. We got keyboards, paint cans, whatever this is, typewriters, computer monitors. It's destiny on the line. We want you at Surplus. Products are not guaranteed to work. All sales are final. This commercial is not endorsed by Utah State.